All right, boys, we've been training for this for weeks. Cutting plastic sprues, airbrushing, painting, all for this one moment. You know what this means, boys. Time to beat some space marines. For the greater good! <laughs> this is Phil. Hi. He's one of my oldest friends and a pretty smart fella. The orange, the white, the bloody dynamite, tower warriors. <laughs> well, most of the time. But when presented with something as huge in scope as the Warhammer 40,000 hobby for the first time, it can be difficult to know where to start. Holding 18 dice. <laughs> in this series, I'll be taking him from green as grass recruit to fully fledged battle commander by helping him build and paint his first models and then play his first games of Warhammer 40,000. Welcome to Warhammer Hobby Bootcamp Part 3, where we're going to be learning all about playing Warhammer 40,000. Are you excited, Phil? Very excited. Let's do this. <laughs> so we've spent the last couple of weeks and the last couple of episodes building and painstakingly painting up your Tau boys, ready for a bit of a scrap against the Space Marines. Let's start off thinking about the things you will need in order to play Warhammer 40,000. The first thing you're going to need are the game rules. We've got 10th edition coming up this summer, I believe. Yep, that's right, in just a couple of weeks. For new players trying to get into the game, when a new edition launches is quite a good time. The other thing you're going to need are your army rules. Now at the moment, we're filming this towards the end of May, so we don't have all the rules available just yet. What we do have are the 10th edition core rules and then also some of the faction focus rules that we've seen for various armies. Now, the interesting thing about Warhammer 40,000 compared with probably any other game um, is that it doesn't really use a board. And that means that wherever you're playing is your battlefield. For today, we're gonna to be playing on my kitchen table, but you can also play on any open area of floor if that's all you've got. Phil, it's time for me to give you some gifts. Ooh, presents. A vintage Games, Games, Games Workshop tape, tape measure. And the other thing you're going to need... Some dice. Some dice. Right. And with this, I'm definitely completely ready to start and I've got everything I need. Is there anything right? else that you might need to play the game, Philip? Oh, my models. Some pristinely painted Orange Tower models. Are you ready? So ready. Are Let's you ready this. to dive into our first game of Warhammer 40,000? <laughs> ready to do this. When playing your first games, I recommend keeping it as simple as possible. We'll be playing with basic stat lines and starting with my Assault Intercessors 30 inches away from Phil's Fire Warriors. This should give him a good chance to get his guns to bear before I make it into melee. First thing to know about Phil is the phases of the game. Players take it in turns to activate their armies and go through the five phases of a turn. After each player has taken five turns, the game ends. For this battle, we'll be skipping the command phase, as I think it adds extra complexity that a beginner doesn't need in their first skirmish. I've given the Tau the first turn, that means Phil will be starting off with the movement phase. Every model has got a movement value on its datasheet. What is the movement characteristic of your Fire Warriors squad, Phil? They can move six inches. There's two things you can do. The first one is to move. This means you move up to your movement characteristic across the battlefield. You can move in any direction. You don't have to move the full six inches if you don't want to. So I thought I could separate my squad out and do a cool pincer movement, but turns out they all have to move together. Now the reason why Phil's squad couldn't all move in different directions is because squads have to maintain what's called unit coherency. That means you have to keep one model close to at least one other model in the unit. We're now gonna move on to the shooting phase. We're gonna be shooting at these guys. So the range on their pulse rifles is 30 inches. You are within range. So my squad are equipped with 10 pulse rifles, so I'm going to roll 10 dice for that. They've got ballistic skill four plus, which means anything over four hits. All right, three shots of hit, which means I'm gonna to roll to wound on a three plus. That's all three of them. Some weapons have armor penetration, and these pulse rifles have an armor penetration or AP value of minus one, which is gonna make it one harder for the Space Marines to make their armor saves. I managed to save two, but one goes through. We'll now compare the damage value of the pulse rifles, and they only do one point of damage. When a point of damage is inflicted, I then take a wound or a number of wounds off of my models, Fortunately, my Space Marines have got two wounds each, so that means only one of them is gonna be taken down by one wound. So, so far, so good. I think it's just the abbreviations, which I still need to get my head around. During this turn, Phil's Fire Warriors are still a long way away, meaning there is nothing for him to do in the charge and fight phases of this turn. 
Once you've completed all five phases, play moves over to your opponent. I'm going to go into the movement phase and I'm going to show you the other action that you can take during your movement phase, the other common one that you're going to use. What we're going to do here is do an advanced move with my models. When you are too far away from the enemy and you want to get closer, or you just want to sprint for that next piece of cover, doing an advanced move can get you closer to the enemy with a few drawbacks. To advance, you take one dice, also known as a d6, and you roll that, adding it to your movement value. Two extra inches. That means my Blood Angel can move a total of eight. Their general movement value is six. When measuring, always make sure you're measuring from the front of the base to the front of the base. You can also do back of base to back of base. The main thing is you don't want to gain inches by moving your models further than they are allowed. Now, as I mentioned, because I've advanced my squad, they're going to have some disadvantages, mostly being they cannot shoot and they cannot charge this turn if they are in range. That means actually that because I have no charges to declare, and I have no fights going on. That is the end of my turn. So Tau turn two begins now. Do I want to move any closer? Is moving any closer really risky? <laughs> I think I just want to stay where I am and fire at you, given that I seem to have a bit of a range advantage. So if I move any closer into rapid fire range, that would probably put me in danger of being in close combat range as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit back, relax, and just uh, pepper him with some pulse rifles. That is two wounds, which is enough to take out this marine and wound one more. Now my gun drone can do something slightly different. It's only got a 24 inch range, which means it's well within range to hit Ollie's unit now. So my little gun drone here has two pulse carbines, which Ollie said can shoot twice uh, for a total of four shots. It doesn't have the same armor penetration value as the Fire Warriors, but let's give it a shot. So it hits once here. Yeah. And so I have to roll to see if I inflict a wound. A wound which it does. Yes, yeah, fantastic. The armor penetration value is zero. All he needs a three plus. So and he, he saves that quite comfortably. <laughs> I have nothing to declare apart from my interest in the greater good. The Blood Angels advance under a hail of gunfire, then it's back to the Tau and some cowardly tactics. Okay, so my question to Ollie now is, can I move them backwards and then still shoot at you? Absolutely. Okay, as I'm not in close combat with Ollie yet, I will see if I can retreat a little bit and then still fire some shots at him. The greater good, every move is for the greater good. We've repositioned strategically. Ollie would call it uh, a cowardly retreat, but I call it a strategic repositioning. And now we're going to continue to fire our pulse rifles at him while keeping him at an arm's length. Let's go back to the Blood Angels, who've weathered the Tau shooting without casualty and are preparing their assault. How far away am I now? I am between 14 and 15 inches. So I'm hoping that this turn I can make a big nine inch charge Hopefully it will also get some bolt pistols to bear as well. First, let's see how their armor fares against bolt pistols. So here I am trying to save my freshly painted Tau Fire Warriors as they start taking some hits, some heavy fire. Save one. And the other one gets inflicted with one point of damage. Which means your Tau Fire Warriors only have one wound each. Do they? I spent all this time painting up these armor panels for them to only have one hit point. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that hits different. <laughs> so this is hopefully where the Blood Angels can now get a redemption. With shooting done, we're going to move on to the charge phase. To be able to charge, you have to be within 12 inches of an enemy unit, and then you have to measure the distance between your unit and theirs. In order to get in, I'll need a nine inch charge. Let's see if I can make it. That's quite unlikely, but I believe no, we fail. When you fail a charge, you remain in place and don't move at all. Nice charge, buddy. <laughs> Scum. <laughs> so I've taken a dice away because one of our Tau Warriors got, uh, got viciously murdered. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to start with our movement phase. Yet more Tau cowardice on display as Phil continues his retreat. This is the way to Tau. My main reason for picking the Tau, even though I said something nice about the aesthetic in the first video, my main reason was to annoy Ollie. <laughs> firing at him and retreating and then firing at him again 
is the most fun I can possibly have playing this. Because I am within 15 inches of Ollie's units, I now get to fire twice per rifle. You know what feels really good, Ollie? Holding 18 dice. <laughs> That's a lot of ones. <laughs> Hubris. Oh no! I was so confident. That is terrible. Nice. I can't charge because I'm outside of 12, but I've taken out another Space Marine. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Um, so yeah, it's on to Ollie's turn four. And then our charge, well, we're gonna shoot first, and our charge is only between six and seven inches, which means it's a six inch charge. First, we're gonna shoot two bolt pistols. Two shots, two kills. Taste bolter, Xenos scum. <laughs> Just so necessary. <laughs> My blood angels also make their six inch charge this time, which means Philip finally has been engaged in close combat, not where the Tau want to be. When models charge into the fight phase, they then get to attack. So my Assault Intercessor Sergeant gets three attacks, plus one from having a chainsword. This guy gets two attacks, plus one from having a chainsword. So four plus three is seven attacks. Dodgy camera work, aren't they? Seven attacks? Yep, hitting on threes. Oof, not good. However, these will be wounding on threes. That's two wounds. These are AP of minus one. So just like shooting, you now get to roll your saves. Two five ups to make. No, that's two more dead fire warriors. You want me to take them from here? Yeah, I think Pew! Now the great thing here, Phil, though, is you do get to fight back with your town. Now after what can only be described as a crushing number of casualties, I get to fight back against Ollie's melee units. So I get one attack per Tau Fire Warrior and two attacks for my leader, the Char Sui. Um, so yeah, here we go. Just comparing the size of the swords there for anyone who wonders why I've chosen to retreat tactically every turn. <laughs> and even just the size of the bodies. <laughs> yeah, even just the size of the models, it's quite striking. You know, we always call them little men, but now I realize I've picked the littlest little men. <laughs> Here we go. So we have thrown in our melee attacks. Unfortunately, just one hit. We have one hit because we're fighting terrified, terrifying bioengineered <laughs> monster men. <laughs> so one hit. Yep. My strength is three. His toughness is four, which uh, means I'm only wounding on a five plus. And that, uh, this dice pretty much summarizes my current mood after <laughs> melee combat. <laughs> I guess our melee weapons just sort of ping casually off the thick armor that they're wearing. But fear not, because it is Tau turn five coming up. Stay tuned for how much the Tau are gonna get massacred in close <laughs> combat. In the last couple of turns, the tides shifted in my favor, but two fire warriors made it to the end of turn five. Custom dictates, we do a shake of hands here, Philip. We, we did, did it. <laughs> Literally, same time. Um, so yeah, we've now played a simplified version of Warhammer 40,000. How did you find your first experience of the grim, dark future of the 41st millennium? I thought it was nice to have a tutorial style game to start off with the simple, basic rules before getting into the more detailed things later on. I think it all went pretty well for you, tactically. You had, I think, the right strategy. Stay far behind, try and take as many Blood Angels out as I could before you engaged in close combat. I kind of think the main thing is to get used to the different phases mm -hmm. and how, like, what sequence of events happen. And I think playing a simplified version first to determine the sequence of events yeah. is really important for that. Yeah. And once you've kind of got the hang of that and that becomes a habit, then I think if you layer in more complex rules after that, it becomes much, much easier to keep track of. You don't know about this, but I've got a little surprise for you. Live on camera. <laughs> what really happened is that I took it a bit easy on Ollie this game. He's so proud of his little blood angels that I didn't want to kill them all before he got into close combat. So, oh, hey Ollie. Just giving a little battle roll. What is that? What? That is your HQ unit, a Tau <laughs> Enforcer Commander. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my God. And you've painted him up in my color scheme. Yeah, so That's I've given, I've done so him to basic cool. levels because the next thing we're going to be doing in the series is we're going to be taking this guy 
and showing off some advanced painting techniques. This is some like Pacific Rim type stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Something that finally can compete with the Blood Angels in terms of size. Yeah. Not that size matters. Um, Phil, if people want to get their own Tau Enforcer Commander, where would be the best place for them to go? That's a really good question, Ollie. I personally would head to elementgames.com and use your affiliate link to get a discount at no extra cost to you and Ollie gets a kickback, so it's a win-win all round. After having learned the basic rules and feeling quite comfortable with them, I'm looking forward to seeing how terrain and more complex rules are going to affect the game. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this one and you want to keep in touch with Phil's hobby journey, please hit the subscribe button down below and let me know what you've enjoyed about today's episodes in the comments. Give him what you would arm this Enforcer Commander with. What weapons should he have? You'll see I've left them off for now. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie. My name's been Phil. This has been my hobby. And we'll see you next time. It's so cool. It's so cool.